Hi everyone, this is Mike. Creating flowcharts uh, when it comes to website design is, is so important. You really have to get a structure of how many pages are going to be in your website and you know, do, working with a flowchart really will help you out. It will help guide you and a lot of times what will happen is you'll work on one page then you move on to the next and you'll complete it and then you move on to the next. And some of your flowcharts will have many sub-levels and so it's really important to go in and have a flowchart in place. Uh, in previous experiences I've seen companies and designers have a whole wall set up uh, for a flowchart and all the levels below it because it was such a complicated website they're trying to make it easier for flowing so that once they see it on the wall they're able to go in so okay this page goes to here and it also is linked over to this other page and this was for a uh, well-known um, bank within the United States and uh, over a hundred over a hundred pages uh, at least um, I think it was up to 200 so let me show you how to create a flowchart in Photoshop. Um, you can do it in any other program as well, but for, for what we like to do is we like to do it in Photoshop or Illustrator. So what I want to do here is I'm going to create a new document. So I'm going to go up to File, New. And I want to make sure I'm going to have 11 inches in width. So I'm just going to type it in and I'm going to do 8.5 in height. I want to keep the resolution at 72 because if you go any higher it's not really needed for a flow chart and the file size will just get too large. So I'm once I put the information in I'm going to click OK. And this opens up a little document here that I can work with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically go in and use the vector tools that Photoshop has. A vector tool is just mathematically defined lines and we have a variety of vector tools over here on the left hand side starting with our pen tool, our type tool, um, arrow for selecting and then we have our line and shape tools. So what I want to do here is I want to click on the rectangle tool and what's going to come up by default is look, let's look at your options bar because you're going to remember every tool that you select it has its own set of options and it's found up here at the top right below the menu bar system and the first thing I want you to look at is the first button is turned on by default. If it is not, that's because some, you might have worked in another class, you might have worked in another design and turned it off, and it's called shape layers. Go ahead and keep that on because it does become easier to work with and manipulate. And then over all the way on the right hand side we have the color option. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shape color to white. I clicked on the color. This opens up the color picker. I'm just going to click on the top left hand corner to make sure it's white. Now once we draw this with a white background it makes it a little harder to see so we'll add a black stroke to it. So we'll do that in just a second. So what I want to do here is I'm going to create a rectangle and this is going to indicate be my home page. When I do this, this automatically it adds it to a layer and that's the benefit of working with a shape layer. So if you look on your layers panel over here on the right hand side, you'll see it's called shape one. Now there's a little black border around it. That does not mean that there is a actual border on that shape. It's just showing you where the shape is. So what I want to do is I want to add that black stroke. To do that, I'm going to use my layers panel. I'm going to click on the FX button. I'm going to click on stroke. Now here I'm going to change the size so it is one pixel not three and then I'm also going to make sure the color is black. So if this color down here is set to be something else click on it and choose black. Again uh, if you're doing this on a personal level then it doesn't matter what color you're using for our class and, and what we're working with we want it to be a certain color so it stands out. And now I'm just going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer four more times. So I can create a second level. So we have our home page level and then we're going to have a second level below it. The easiest thing to do, take your move tool, which is your first tool in your toolbox. Hold down the Alt key if you're on a PC, Option key on the Mac, Option key on the Mac. And then you just hold down your mouse and you drag 
rectangle down to the left. This creates a separate layer and now you have two rectangles. Now what you do is you just continue that. So I'm holding down the Alt key or Option key. And I'm going to repeat that four times. Now I'm going to move the Layers panel up a little bit so we can see it. So holding down the Alt key or Option key allows me to duplicate a layer or duplicate an object. And now all I have to do is add some text and do some rearranging. So in this case, what I want to do is these four rectangles, I'm just going to kind of clean it up a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to make sure it's evenly uh, distributed with space and it's aligned to the, at the top of the edges. And to do that, I'm going to select all four layers at once. So I'm going to click at the top layer. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to click on this last layer. I'm not going to include the top one because that's a separate level. Then with all those four layers selected, you can see they're highlighted in blue. I'm going to go up to layer. In my menu system, I can choose align. I'm going to choose top edges. I didn't really need to do it for there, but if it's off just a, just a centimeter or so, it will automatically adjust it. I'm going to go back up to the layer, align, or I'm sorry, distribute. And this will add equal spacing between the rectangles. And I'm going to do vertical centers, or I'm sorry, horizontal centers, since we're going horizontally across. And you can see it has nice equal spacing in between. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to click on the top layer, and now I'm going to add my lines. And I'm going to come over here to the vector tool where the rectangle was, I'm going to choose the line tool. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a simple line. And up here on the options bar, I have the weight set to white, one pixel. Um, so that's great. And I also want to double check. Um, I have my arrowheads turned off at this time. So, and there's a little drop down list. So I want to make sure that's turned off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line that goes straight across. And we'll hold down my shift key to keep it horizontal. We'll hold down the shift key to keep it horizontal. So again, I'm just adding a couple extra lines here to help us set up that flow chart. And now I'm going to add some additional lines. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up. I'm going to use, I'm going to have an arrowhead that ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a line at the edge here. And I'm going to drag straight down. Now the arrowhead itself is a little bit small. So if you want to make it larger, I'm going to undo this. And notice up here I turned on the end option. I can also increase the weight. The weight will all over here on the right will increase the thickness of the arrowhead. So let me just go up to let's say three pixels. And so let's see what it looks at like now. So here you go. It automatically is Applying the arrow down. If you think it's too small, just do an undo or too large and just change the value. Now, again, you don't have to draw it four times, <laughs> you just duplicate it. I'm, hold, I'm taking the move tool, I'm holding down the alt key, and I'm also holding down the shift key. So if when I hold down the shift key, it keeps it horizontally across. I release my mouse and I start all over again. So there's no need to recreate it four times. Since you create it once, all you have to do is duplicate it with the Alt or Option key, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC. Then lastly, I'm going to draw another line. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a start arrowhead and an end. And I'm going to start up here at the top. Now it's a little bit too close, so what I want to do here is um, I can undo it and do a smaller pixel, or I can move it uh, using my move tool. So let me undo it. Let me just do one pixel here instead. Oops, I accidentally put in 12. So if you do that, I accidentally just undo it. Now 
Now I'm just going to move that in place. Kind of center it. And there we go. We got our basics of our flow chart. Now all you have to do is add some text. So in this case, uh, when we're adding text, uh, you can go in and simply put in uh, a brief name of the title of the page. So I'm going to come over here to the type tool. Now before I type, it remembers the last color I used which is white. So I'm going to click on this little, down here at the very bottom left hand corner, I'm going to click on where it says black and white, default foreground. You can press the letter D as in David and that will change it. And that way the black text, or it's going to come up with black color. And now I'm going to come up here with my text tool and I'm going to click in the middle. I'm going to type in home. And a lot of times people like to put in numbers here uh, as the main main uh, page and I'll put in 1.0. Now if you want to make it larger, highlight the text, then come up on your options bar and change the font choices. I can center it as well. And then you can move it in place. Then what you want to do is you want to add that text to each of these boxes here to indicate the page name. Now if you were going to create a third level, then you would actually just include and keep going down to the next level. There are other programs out there that will actually do flow charts a little bit better, but it's also very simple to do in Photoshop and Illustrator. So I would actually you know, use what you have and, and, and try and incorporate that. Now once all the text is in and you're ready to go, you want to save it as, you can save it a couple different ways. So um, a lot of people will save as a JPEG or they'll save as a PDF um, working with that. So depending on what your, your situation is, um, now saving as a PDF is very simple and that's probably the preferred way so that way everybody can open it up no matter what program you're using. And to do that you just do a simple file save as. Down here at the bottom we're going to choose the format as a PDF. And I do want to make uh, make one notice is that before you save as a PDF, you want to save the original as a PSD. So if you need to go back and make a change, save the original as a PSD, which is this top format, and then you can come back and make a change. When you save as a PDF, you will flatten your image and you won't be able to access your layers. So make sure you have the original save as a PSD, but then save after that save as a PDF, which is listed right here. And uh, if you're following within an assignment, you have to name it a certain certain way, so make sure you follow that. I'm just going to type in flowchart. And um, let me save it right onto my desktop. Again, you can save it into a folder on your in your documents folder or whatever. whatever. I'm going to click on save. And um, here I'm going to override what this information up here. You can turn on don't show again. It's not a big issue. And what's happening here is that you can tell what type of quality that you want. Um, high quality prints are fine. There's also press quality and smallest file. I'd probably stick with high quality. It's just saying preserve. I'm going to say continue. It's been saved and then you just need to upload that into your assignment. Now the PDF course is over here on my desktop so let me open this up. This will open up in Acrobat. If you're on the Mac it might open up in Preview and this is what it looks like. So that's all you need to do when you're creating a flowchart. Again, if you're going to have multiple levels then sometimes you might have multiple pages that you'll create. So what I mean by that is that you know for your second level you might have uh, the first page might have its own page in your PDF of for the flowchart. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to create a flowchart in Photoshop. Again, you can do it in Illustrator, but I find Photoshop easier to work with for those people who are a little bit new to the design aspect.